Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. I hope everybody who celebrated had a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend and Black Friday. Hopefully it was filled with great food, maybe a little relaxation if you were lucky. My family and I visited Savannah, Georgia for the weekend. It was my first time there and it was amazing. My husband was joking that he wanted to move there while we were there. We drove and it was about seven hours. We took Jazzy with us and we met my parents who also brought their little mini poodle. So it was just a great time. We explored, did all of the tourist things, ate incredible food. We definitely overindulged while we were there, but overall it was an incredible trip and a great weekend. I intended to get a few more videos pre-filmed than I did. So it's been a while since I've uploaded a video, but I do have some exciting news because this year, once again, I'm attempting 25 days of Vlogmas. So in December, for at least the first 25 days, that's all I have planned so far, I will have a video every single day. So I have been working a little bit behind the scenes to get some December videos filmed. So I will have consistent uploads for the next few weeks, and I've already mapped out all of my video ideas what I have in the works. But if you have any ideas, anything that you would love to see from me, maybe a video style that I've never done before, I think that's kind of the fun of December Vlogmas is there are so many videos you can really spice it up, add some variety in there. Please let me know down below. I would love to change my schedule to suit whatever you would be interested in seeing. But today's video is a fragrance haul and unboxing, including the brand new Kaoli Vanilla Royale Sugared Patchouli 64 Intense Eau de Parfum. I've been so excited to try this fragrance. I have not opened it yet. I've seen so many reviews and it has certainly piqued my interest. Of course, all new Kaoli fragrances do. This was sent to me complimentary by the brand. They've only ever asked me to share my honest opinion with you. Of course, I'm going to do that again today. I love the solid gold bottle. This looks like a bar of gold. You can already tell this is a very luxurious, glamorous fragrance. This is stunning. And let's talk about the notes. On the back it says vanilla sur absolu, golden rum, creme brulee, brown sugar, royal oud, and sugared patchouli. All of those sound delicious, incredible. I'm a huge fan of the Vanilla 28, and I consider Vanilla 28 to be a pretty deep, dark, and moody, a hearty vanilla. It's also great for layering, adding an extra boost of a vanilla note with any other fragrance. So I'm very curious to see how this fits in with the rest of the line, because I know a lot of the Kaoli fragrances, they're kind of designed to be either worn alone, but layered, mixed, matched. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I'm so excited. Wow. Wow. Oh, that's so nice. Ooh, yes. It's so pretty. Mmm, I definitely pick up a little rum, the creme brulee, brown sugar. It's a little bit sweet on the sweeter side. This is a deep, hearty vanilla. And you can definitely smell the patchouli. It's not too much right now. I'm kind of curious, a little bit nervous to see what it's like on the skin. It's one of those notes. I know I've said it a million times, basically every time I talk about patchouli, but it's so polarizing. And in some fragrances, it's perfect. In other fragrances, it's the note that ruins the fragrance for me. I don't know why or how or what, but it's just, fickle. I don't know if other people feel the same way I do. I'm sure you feel that way maybe about other notes. But I think I love this. I wasn't sure what to expect, but it's really nice. I'm so tempted to spray this directly on my skin. I do have several other fragrances to try. I'm gonna wait, but this is going to be my fragrance of the day. I feel like royalty. Even just smelling it on the water car, like, wow, this is an elegant, dressed up fragrance. This is not a casual, everyday spritz before you get out the door. No, this is holiday party, special event, red carpet. And it doesn't strike me as the type of fragrance that needs anything else. I would not tweak this. I wouldn't layer this. I think it's perfect on its own. Wow. Just wow. Really, really beautiful fragrance. And here I thought they had already perfected vanilla, but this is totally different. I wouldn't say they're both in the same category. I don't know, I just wouldn't compare them. 
Vanilla 28 is a beautiful, very vanilla forward, but somewhat singular fragrance, whereas this feels like more of a craft niche, very complex, standalone type of fragrance. This I would put in the same category as a Gris Charnel from BDK, or even a Minuit et Demi from Fragrance de Bois. It's that caliber, that category. Beautiful for fall winter. This might end up being my favorite Kaoli launch of the year, and I was a huge fan of the Burning Cherry, but this is next level. Switching gears now to another niche fragrance house that I have yet to try. This is from Room 1015 Cherry Punk Eau de Parfum. They sent this over complimentary and they also included a bunch of samples from the brand. So I haven't dug into those yet either, but I know this fragrance is kind of making the rounds on YouTube. I've seen in people's thumbnails and in the videos as well that a lot of people are talking about Cherry Punk and they're reviewing it, talking about cherry fragrances in general, which one of my all time favorite fragrances is Tom Ford Lost cherry. So I love cherry fragrances. There aren't that many that I know of at least and I've resisted the urge to watch reviews. As soon as I hear people talking about something that I'm planning to review, I switch off, I click away because I don't want anyone else's opinion to influence or sway mine in any way but I do love cherry in fragrances so I have high hopes for cherry punk and I haven't even read the notes yet. I will pull them up here in a second. So it might have nothing to do with Tom Ford Lost Cherry. They could be completely different. I just like the idea of cherry in fragrances as a note. Keynotes include cherry, saffron, Sichuan pepper, violet, jasmine absolute, mimosa, patchouli, tonka bean, and black leather. I love the bottle, the deep red. It's very beautiful. It looks like a very passionate, seductive style fragrance. And the notes sound really interesting as well. Leather, like patchouli, leather can go one of two ways with me. Sometimes I really like it, other times it's just a turn off. Let's see. Ooh, it does smell a little bit like Tom Ford Lost Cherry. I wouldn't say it's a dupe or inspired by. I think the notes are too different. And see, immediately the cherry is starting to soften a little bit and that leather is coming through. I'm definitely picking up more leather now, but initially you do get a little sweetness and that kind of a burst of cherry right away that does remind me of Tom Ford. It's very pretty. It has like a smooth quality that's not vanilla that I really like. Kind of reminds me of like an old bookstore. Like sipping cherry Coke in an old bookstore. <laughs> That's what I think of whenever I smell this. I can definitely see this being more of a unisex fragrance. I'm trying to think, would I wear this? Would my husband wear this? Would I enjoy wearing this fragrance? And I think I would, but in more of a casual, cool kind of way. Because it's such a unique scent, it is kind of cool. You know when you go somewhere wearing this fragrance that most likely nobody else is going to be wearing it, and it smells so nice and it kind of lures you in. The more I smell it, I keep wanting to go back and go back for more. And that could be the Tonka bean. It smells very cool, confident, a trendsetter. I can see somebody very fashionable wearing this fragrance. When I smell this, the person who comes to mind, she has bangs, a bright red lipstick, leather jacket, a really cool outfit, something that I would never even put together, but she's just pulling it off effortlessly, like that type of style. I love it, I think it's really nice. And I think it would work with jeans and a t-shirt or a little black dress. Smells pretty versatile as well. It's hard to pinpoint because this is such a unique fragrance. I'm not sure I could say, oh, I would wear this daytime or evening or, Fall, winter, spring, summer, it's not like that. It's a fragrance that I can't really put in a box for you. It's just the overall mood. This is a fragrance that you wear for a very specific mood. I can definitely see myself wearing this to maybe an event in Miami. We have Art Basel coming up, so there are a ton of events on the calendar at the moment. I think a fragrance like this would be kind of the perfect fragrance to wear so that you smell really good, smell interesting, you're wearing something different, 
but it doesn't smell like you're trying too hard. It screams secret society if you know you know about this fragrance. It doesn't smell like artificial cherry at all. I wouldn't say it's a sweet gourmand style fragrance like Lost Cherry. I'm not sure what category to put this in. Fruity leather. I think this is probably the only fragrance like that in my entire collection. I didn't really know what to expect. I had zero expectations. Again, I've never heard of this brand, but this is incredible. I'm really impressed with this fragrance because it's one that I already look forward to wearing out and about in real life. We're two for two, and here is another gem that was very generously sent over from Twisted Lily. This is a new fragrance from Memo Paris. I don't know if I have any Memo Paris fragrances. I don't think I do. I believe I've tried a few samples of some of their most popular bestsellers, but only a couple samples have I ever tried, and this would be the first full-size fragrance in my collection. It's the brand new Madurai. On the website, the perfumer says, I created Madurai thinking about a wonderful trip to South India a few years ago. I remember one morning sitting on a small terrace drinking tea. All of my senses were alert. In the warm air, the intoxicating perfume of the flower cellars, the power of the spices and sweetness of the mangoes from the stalls, the rich and airy jasmine sandbag of the offering necklaces, and the creamy scent of sandalwood around the temples. And that's also what inspired this beautiful design you see on the bottle. It comes from the ceiling of the temple. Keynotes include turmeric essence, jasmine sandbag, absolute peach, Italian bergamot oil, clary sage oil, Indian tuberose absolute, Egyptian jasmine absolute, Australian sandalwood oil, and suede accord. The design on the bottle is absolutely stunning, and especially when you know the inspiration, you can just appreciate it a little bit more. Almost looks like the ocean. It's obviously tiles from the temple, but maybe it was supposed to depict the ocean. I'm not sure. It just looks beautiful. I love the colors that they used. I think it might have been on my last fragrance video, but in one of my fragrance videos, somebody asked me recently to perhaps make an entire video to answer the question, what is the argument to be made for niche fragrances over designer fragrances? I kind of thought about it, and the answer is I would never make an argument for niche fragrances the same way I wouldn't make an argument for designer fragrances. I think fragrance is just so personal that the fragrances you should go for are the fragrances that you just love. You love them, you connect with them, they excite you, they inspire you, you love to wear them, they work really well with your skin chemistry, you know, they don't turn on your skin, you can enjoy them all day long. But something I love and appreciate about niche fragrances is the inspiration behind them. You can read about the perfumer's inspiration, the story behind them, there's always a lot more context. There's a lot more meaning behind each and every fragrance in a niche brand. With designer fragrances, the inspiration is often sales. You know, what is going to sell? What have we done before that smells really good, that's really popular, that everyone will like? Because we want to create a holiday set and we want to create 10 flankers that are similar and sell those as well. And that's not to say that the perfumers who are creating designer fragrances aren't incredible, talented, they aren't inspired, masters. They are absolutely masters of their craft and it takes a really incredible master perfumer to work with some of these big designer houses that have huge budgets. It's not to say that they lose the passion and the inspiration, but the way they work, the way they have to work is under constant deadlines. It's all about cranking out fragrances. You receive a brief, you make the fragrance, perfect it, receive another brief, make the fragrance, perfect it, and it's just a little bit more of, I think, a normal work grind. It's probably not that different from any other job where you have a boss saying, okay, this is due right now. And I think back to the masterclass I took with a Francis Kurgian of Maison Francis Kurgian, where he talked about making fragrances and he said, you know, it's not that glamorous. A lot of people think that, oh, if you're a master perfumer, that it's because your nose was kissed by God when you were created and you have some special ability that nobody else has. And it's not to say you can't be gifted because certainly he is gifted. He was being very humble in that moment, but it's a lot of work. And I don't think people appreciate that 
master perfumers and, and even just perfumers in general, a lot of times they go to school for a really long time to learn the craft. It's a lot of education that's involved. The industry is constantly changing. And when you're creating fragrances at that level, you're working for a Dior, he now is the perfumer at Dior or Chanel, you're working for a giant machine, a global fragrance house. They're not taking any risks. They're not using experimental notes. They're not interested in your trip to India that inspired you to create the next fragrance. You're really working for them and creating what they want you to create versus niche fragrance houses or smaller brands that don't have the same deadlines, pressures. You're not part of this giant global machine you can create fragrances for you that are inspired by you personally, your personal trip to India or a memory from childhood. You can focus more on ingredients and, you know, perfecting the fragrances that you love and you can actually afford to take risks because you're not creating millions of bottles of the juice. I know I said I wasn't going to make an argument, but I guess I kind of did make an argument. It's not to say that designer fragrances are better though. You are not a better person because you wear designer versus niche or vice versa. It all comes down to personal preference, but I do think there is so much more variety in niche fragrances that you don't get with designer houses. What you will get with big designer brands, consistency across the board. They have the budget to spring for amazing ingredients, the bottle design. They do often have inspiration behind some of their fragrances as well. It's not to say that they aren't inspired and they're only driven by money, but it's just a different operation. So I think there are pros and cons to both, but you should always choose your fragrance based on what you like. And that's it. And price point, of course. Budget, of course. But choose fragrances that you love. If you've never tried a niche fragrance that really speaks to you, then perhaps you need to try different brands. But maybe it's just not for you. If you love wearing designer fragrances, then that's perfect. As, as long as you are happy and you have a fragrance that puts a smile on your face and you know you smell good, you walk a little bit taller, you have that boost of confidence, that's really what it's all about anyways. I think sometimes we overcomplicate things that are really just not that complicated. You might see a lot of niche fragrances maybe on social media. Perhaps you feel like you're missing out or perhaps you've never found something that you really love. But at the end of the day, fragrance is really for you. Oh, it's so nice. After that speech, I hoped that I would love this. I really hoped that this was going to be a special fragrance and I wasn't going to sit here and think, oh, dang it, this isn't that good. No, it's beautiful. Wow. Oh, it's so nice. I love white floral fragrances. That's another one of those notes, genres that really speaks to me. If you love floral fragrances, this is perfect because there's a little something else. It has a little zing. It's the peach. That absolute peach is so nice. It's another one of those fruity notes that you don't really get that often in fragrances, so it kind of wakes you up like, ooh, what's that? And it's so smooth and it has a little creaminess and a little warmth from the sandalwood and there's a little spiciness, but not too much. It's so pretty. Wow. I am so happy I get to try this fragrance because, well, for one thing, it's incredible, but I also just never really connected to any of the other Memo fragrances that I had tried. But this is so special. White floral, peach, sandalwood, and a little spiciness. But it's very soft and it's not overly sweet. It's not a really juicy, fruity peach. Mmm. Kind of just smells like morning. Smells like the morning. I have not had the privilege to visit India yet in my lifetime. I hope that I will one day because I've heard it's incredible. And I love Indian food. <laughs> That's really the main reason. No, but I would just love the experience. I just imagine waking up really early in the morning, 
walking through kind of the marketplace when everybody is setting everything up, you can kind of get all of these different smells, different textures. It's, it's a medley of so many things wafting you in the face. That's kind of what this reminds me of. I think they did a wonderful job. And that peachiness, it just smells like a ray of sunshine, warmth washing over you. It's so pretty. I have two more fragrances here to unbox from Unui Nomad, another new niche fragrance brand, or at least new to me. These were both sent to me complimentary. This is Suma Oriental and Jardin de Mispa. I'm excited to try these. I love the packaging. The bottle looks beautiful. Usually I look up the notes before I try it, but I'm just going to risk it all and spritz the water and see what my impression is first. See if I can pick up any of the notes and then I'll look it up. So without any knowledge whatsoever of this fragrance. Definitely vanilla, amber. It's very pretty. Oof, this is my style of fragrance, definitely. Yeah, it's like a really beautiful, deep, moody, hearty vanilla. Reminds me a little bit of the Sugared Patchouli from Kaoli. It's very pretty. Okay, now I'm curious, I need to know. I just looked it up and I was wrong. Vanilla is not listed. That's not to say it doesn't have vanilla. I think a lot of fragrances do. But the keynotes, or the keynotes listed, include rum, cocoa, patchouli, sandalwood, tonka bean, cashmere wood, guayac wood, and musk. So not even amber is listed. I was so sure, but it's that style of fragrance. It's not something I would reach for for daytime, but it's very pretty. If you like rummy, boozy, kind of warm, ambery fragrances, I think you will love this. Next up, we have Jardin de Mispa. I know Jardin is garden in French. I'm not sure about Mispa, but it's the Garden of Mispa. And I definitely cheated. I looked up the notes and this one sounds delicious. Key notes include cardamom, nutmeg, dates, rose, almond, and saffron almond, nutmeg, and rose in the same fragrance. This has got to be good. And you can see the juice is kind of orange and it has a green label. But again, I really like the packaging. Mm. Oh, it's a lot sweeter. It's very sweet, but I do get a little almond. This is very nice. It's kind of light and whimsical and fairy dust. It's very pretty. Oh, it's like a sweet edible flower. So unexpected. I thought this was going to be kind of warmer, deeper, like a moody gourmand, but it's not at all. It's not really spicy. It's like a sweet, light, almond flower. Not almond flower, but almondy flower. Oh, it's so nice. Almost like one of those really crunchy almond cookies that they serve during the holidays. Is it almond? I think they're almond cookies. Might be a different nut that I'm thinking of. They're covered in powder sugar. Kind of reminds me of that. Very princessy. So it's certainly my style. I think of the two, I actually prefer this one. Or I can see myself wearing this one a little bit more. It's not too nutty and there's no bitterness from the almond. And it's not really powdery. I think sometimes almond fragrances have powdery notes. They kind of go hand in hand. That is not the case here. It smells very light, airy, like a breath of fresh air. And it's also a little bit clean, fresh skin. I just imagine this is most likely going to be more of a skin scent. I don't think it's going to knock your socks off. This isn't going to be one of those head turner, crazy projection type of fragrances. Even still, it's so beautiful, I don't even care. I do have an update for you on the Croissant Over Rose Paris candle. When I unboxed this a couple weeks ago, I originally said I liked it, 
but I didn't understand the crazy hype. I saw people selling this on Poshmark for twice the price and I did purchase two because I figured it's back in stock and people rave about it. I love this candle. So what happened was I unboxed it and I thought, oh, okay, that's pretty. It's a really pretty croissant smelling candle. It smells like a delicious, fresh, kind of buttery, crispy croissant, but nothing that I would go crazy for. I sat it down right next to my computer right here on the vanity where I usually work and it was just sitting next to my computer for days and it smells so intense. I haven't lit it yet, but it has just been wafting in my face for days and I swear it just started to make my mouth water and I became obsessed with this candle. Just completely fell in love with it because it really does smell delicious. It smells like a delicious croissant. I showed my husband, I was like, look, what do you think of this candle? And even he really likes it, which is kind of rare because he doesn't usually like baked goods type of scents. I usually have to go with something lighter, fruity, a little bit more natural, but I cannot get over this candle. It smells so nice. I am planning to light it soon. I already have a backup because I purchased this set. It was a little less expensive. So even without smelling this fragrance, I bought two. And then while we were in Savannah, I picked up these cute little wick scissors from a local candle store. So that way I can make sure I clip the wick, which is a little bit too long. Mm. And I can finally enjoy this candle. I am looking forward to lighting it because this smell, I find it intoxicating now. After my video, Overose reached out and they said, we saw your video. Are there any candles that you might be interested in trying? Something that you might like a little bit more than the croissant? And I responded, I actually said, I had a change of heart actually. It's been sitting by my desk and now I am in love with that candle and I want to try the rest of the bakery candles. So they sent over a few additional candles that they thought I would really love, including this one. And I love how it comes in a little pastry bag. It really looks like it comes from a French bakery. This says dreamy delights and fresh pastries. Which one is this? Ooh, this is the pan au chocolat candle. Let's see, I'm gonna give you my honest review. Ooh, little protector is stuck. Oh, I think it melted a little bit. Oh, wow. No, that is really nice. It's very chocolatey, but I really like chocolate. It smells like a chocolate croissant. I might like this one a little bit better than the original croissant. That smells heavenly. I almost bought the pistachio macaron last night because they were having a really great deal and then I got distracted and I forgot and I checked this morning and the deal is over. Hopefully they will have maybe another sale or some sort of promotion before the end of the year, maybe before the holidays. I will try to find out if they have anything coming up. I know Sephora is having another 20% off deal, which starts on Friday. 20% off beauty for beauty insiders. I think it's a one-time code. They did it last year as well, and that should run through the 11th or the 12th. I will list all of the information. Oh, this one smells like chocolate as well. Oh, no, it's the almond. This is the croissant au almond. Oh, that's really nice as well. See, right now I feel the same way I felt originally about the croissant. It smells really nice. Yeah, that is heavenly, oh my gosh. Oh, that almond, it smells like the really delicious almond filling in an almond croissant. You know, that almond jelly filling, how do you make that? It's heaven. My mouth is watering. Ooh, now I want a sweet treat or a dessert. That smells incredible. I don't know which one is my favorite. It is hard to beat the original croissant because it just smells like flaky, buttery crust. I have a feeling when I light them, the almond might become my favorite. And the very last thing I have to share is pretty special. This is an advent calendar from Carner Barcelona. They carry some of my favorite fragrances. Latin Lover is one of my favorites. Just beautiful. 
and I'm really excited to open this up. I have not peeked inside at all. It says, may the magic of Christmas fill your home with love, peace, and endless blessings to you and your loved ones. And it has 24 little drawers filled with Carner Barcelona treats. I'm not gonna unbox all of these in this video, it would just take too long, but I will share a full unboxing on YouTube Shorts or an Instagram Reel sometime soon. And I will make sure I link this down below so you can check it out if you're interested. It's not too late to pick up advent calendars. I know it feels like all of the advent calendars have already been talked about, but you're really supposed to open them one drawer at a time starting December 1st. So we're still in good time. The first drawer has Tarda's body lotion. Ooh, that is another one of my favorites. I think the two fragrances I have from Carner Barcelona, I believe are Tarda's and Latin Lover. And this also has a really nice kind of powdery almond scent. So the body lotion would be incredible. And because I have the fragrance, I can layer them, which is really nice. In drawer 14, we have conditioner. Is there a shampoo? There must be a shampoo somewhere. This is a Bobo body wash. So I like that they include a bunch of ancillaries as well. This has a moisturizer. Didn't know they made skincare products as well. Oh, here is the Tarda shampoo. So you have shampoo, conditioner, body lotion. It's pretty nice. Ooh. Some of the drawers at the bottom have really nice sizes of fragrance. This is Palo Santo. This is a really good size. Wow. I know some people don't like when you give away all of the contents from the box, which makes me laugh because, I don't know, I would never buy an advent calendar without looking at everything that's inside. I hate surprises, so maybe that's just me personally. I was the kid who used to sneak into my mom's closet and very gently open all of my Christmas presents with the help of my older sister, so I don't blame myself. It was a group effort, but we used to just peek in all of our presents before Christmas. Terrible, bad children. But I hate surprises. I'm the same way with my husband. I generally just will buy myself a present and then say, okay, will you get me this, this exact thing? This is what I want right here. It does spoil the fun. If it was a chocolate advent calendar or maybe something with little small things inside, then yes, surprise me. The Nespresso advent calendar, which actually sounds really nice. But if it's a more expensive fragrance, beauty style advent calendar, no surprises. I want to know what's in every single drawer. That way I can determine whether or not it's worth purchasing. Based on the little sneak peek, I'd say this is one of the best ones. It's definitely one of the best looking fragrance calendars I've seen so far, but I just really love the fragrance Tardes. And now I will be able to try all of the ancillary products, shampoo, conditioner, body wash, body lotion, and then I do have the full size fragrance. And that completes today's fragrance unboxing. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you liked hearing my thoughts on these fragrances. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.